are we alone? How did we get here? How did those trees get there? If we had a time machine, we could jump in it and go back four billion years, and then we could watch those mountains rise up and then erode away, and then maybe there were mountains before that that rose up and went away, and there'd be all kinds of animals and plants that came into existence and went extinct. And about a billionth of a second ago, this tree went, whoop, it grew out of the ground. But we need some kind of clock or calendar. We need some kind of timeline to keep track of the comings and goings of all these things so we could know how we got here. But if we had a time machine, we might as well go all the way back to the Big Bang if we really want to know how we got here. But then we'd be surrounded by relativistic particles and all kinds of high energy things we don't understand. It would be unfamiliar. Hmm. When there's a course in history or evolution or the story of how we got here, you can start out with the Big Bang full of relativistic particles and confusing things and then move chronologically forward like this red arrow to the more familiar things over here. Or you can start out with the more familiar things and move to the less familiar like this, move chronologically backwards in time. We've decided to mix these two pr approaches so that what we're doing is we take a time interval in the recent past and then we move forward. Let's call that the first module. Then we go back even further and then go forward in time, call that the second. Go even back even further, call it the third, and et cetera, all the way to the last module, which includes all the way. Now, that is uh, one way to do it, and that's what you'll see the course organized to be like. Now, one other thing in timelines, some are linear that we're used to, 0, 10, 20 years, et cetera, same number of years between tick marks, or log in which there are different numbers of Here's 90 years, here's 9, here's 0.9 years. So a different number of years. Most people understand this, but let's look at the subtleties of the log time scale. There's no zero here. And uh, so we have a log time of years ago in which our lives are on the right. And over here on the left, we have 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang. Now, the, there are 9 billion years squeezed in to that last interval on the left. What about log of time years since the Big Bang? There, we've taken the one and put it on the left side of the plot now. And here are our lives, and our lives are so last so little time that they are, are about one millionth the thickness of that red line. And that is 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. Over here, we've, on the left, we've expanded uh, years, and on the right, we've squeezed 9 billion years into that last interval. Also, there's no zero. Notice there's no zero on the left-hand side. This is a really good plot, kind of plot for cosmology because we're really, really interested in the earliest moments after the Big Bang, and so what we do is we expand out all of that information uh, on the left, and we use seconds, 10 to the minus 43 seconds, 10 to the minus 42 seconds, all the way to 10 to the 7 seconds, which happens to correspond to one year. And that enables us to talk about in fine detail what happened when the universe was super, super hot and everything was relativistic. Okay, we've got a plan. We've got linear and logarithmic time scales, and we've got that interesting detail about logarithmic time scales not having a zero. So, let's get started. We won't start the course with relativistic particles in the Big Bang. We'll start it with recent human history, things we're most familiar with.